You learn in this business, if you want a friend, get a dog. These are the words quoted by Carl Icahn, widely known as the corporate raider of the American economy. Many legendary capitalists have influenced the world through their intense passion and intelligence strategies. But Carl Icahn, well, he is known for something bizarre. He perturbed the corporate world during the 1980s and was a nightmare for many financiers. In this video, let's bring to light the nefarious story of Carl Icahn. Humble beginnings to a ruthless investor. Born on February the 16th, 1936, Carl Icahn was a native of Far Rockaway, Queens, New York. He was the single child of his parents and had a very tough childhood and harsh upbringing. Though his father was a lawyer and a Jewish cantor, he led a morose life and he considered himself a disaster. He could not follow his passion or achieve his professional singer dream. He was also against living in luxury. Carl wanted to get out of his mediocre home and chase his dreams. Being a smart kid in school, he got admission to several prestigious universities, but his parents didn't allow him to go far. However, after high school, Carl attended Princeton University, number one among schools listed among the national universities. He worked as a cabana boy on the private beaches to pay his tuition fee and room rent. He received a bachelor's degree in philosophy from Princeton University in 1957. Carl painted a different colour to his goals when visiting his uncle's New York house. He felt like he had entered heaven, where everything was sparkling and comfy. Carl's dreams started sprouting there with the motive of making more and more money. He grew up with only one goal, make as much money as possible no matter what. But how can the boy with nothing become one of the richest men alive? Leaving Princeton, Carl attended New York University to study medicine to satisfy the desires of his mother. He soon dropped out of it and enrolled in the United States Army Reserves, so his mother couldn't contact him. As he led his life in the army, he realized how badly he wanted to return to his ultimate goal of becoming a billionaire. Until then, he was moving forward with the flow, but he approached his Uncle Elliot to change the track. Uncle Elliot's financial assistance proved to be the turning point of Carl's corporate journey. Icon founded his brokerage firm, Icon & Company, with the $400,000 loan from his uncle. The only person Carl respected in the world is his uncle Elliot, a successful entrepreneur at the time. Do you want to know how Carl Icahn became the most feared man in corporate America? Carl was highly driven, often working long hours to achieve his goals. These qualities served him well in his later career as a successful business magnate and investor. The Lucrative Investment Strategy Icahn began his career in 1961 as a stockbroker for Dreyfus Corporation. Then, two years later, he became an options manager for Tesla, Patrick & Co in 1968. With $150,000 of his own money and $400,000 investment from his uncle, Icahn bought a seat on the New York Stock Exchange and formed Icahn & Co, which focused on risk arbitrage and options trading. In 1978, in his first takeover attempt, he took a controlling stake in Tapan and forced the sale of the kitchen stove maker company to Electrolux, making a profit of around $3 million or around doubling his investment. In 1979, he acquired Baywaters Realty and Capital Corporation. In 1983, he acquired ACF Industries, and in 1985, he sold those shares to Philips Petroleum, making a $50 million profit. These successful activist campaigns in the late 70s and early 80s were formative in Icahn's investment strategy. With these incredible results in company takeovers early on, we can infer that this played a big role in his approach over the next few decades. The Trojan of TWA TWA was the capstone of Icahn's early enterprises. Carl's attack reportedly started when he bought more than 20% of Transworld Airlines stock in 1985 and then proceeded to take TWA private, enriching himself with a $469 million payment. At the same time, TWA was laden with $540 million in debt. Icon sold the airline's London routes for $445 million in 1991. The sale was a killer for TWA because the London routes were very valuable. The airline went bankrupt a year later. In 1993, Icahn resigned as a chairman but signed the Caribou Ticket Agreement, which allowed him to buy any ticket connected through St. Louis for 55 cents on the dollar and resell them at a discount. The deal blocked him from selling tickets through travel agents, but he set up LowestFare.com and made big bucks. The company went bankrupt again in 1995 and eventually joined American Airlines in 2001, which later estimated that the Caribou deal cost TWA $100 million annually. Was it ethical to overpower a company at its weakest phase? 
The Mindful Takeover Artist If we list out the companies whose stakes are owned by Icon and the firms it took over, it would be jaw-dropping. It includes US Steel, King Pharmaceuticals, BEA Systems, American Railcar Industries, Blockbusters, and so on. He engineered the practice of corporate raiding, a strategy that involves procuring large stakes in companies and then elbowing their executives to take on huge amounts of debt, sell off divisions, ship jobs overseas, knock off workers, and curtail workers' benefits to ensure mammoth profits for himself. He also reaped the benefits of green mailing, a practice where a company would make him give up his takeover attempt by either buying him out or agreeing with the administrative and strategic amendments demanded by him. Icon defines his methodology as not very different from that of other investors such as Warren Buffett, who concentrates his acquisition decisions on value investing. The contrasting factor is, via the comprehensive study of the financial statements of various companies, he focuses on finding the cloaked value of vulnerable ones. In other words, he looks for companies facing setbacks today whose shares nobody wants to buy but have an auspicious future. His prime philosophy is that he prefers to buy something when no one else wants it, as long as the profit-loss ratio is advantageous. The profit will certainly meet his bet, and if everything falls right, he has room to cut down on the defaults. The New Gem Businessman Carl Icahn is a venomous figure in the financial world. Undisputably, he is one of the greatest investors to ever exist. To some extent, Icahn is underrated and diminished by some investors. There's a strong dispute to be made that he is on par with Warren Buffett regarding track record and investment trajectories. Why the majority of people disagree with him due to his controversial manner in which he tried to grab the corporate world. Nonetheless, the results are incredible for Carl Icahn, and he has proudly left his fingerprints on the history of investors. Icahn was first thrown into the world scene during the leveraged buyout boom of the 80s when many profitable corporations were plundered for personal profits. This hardline investor and negotiator had a family life too, when he was married to Lieber Trejbull from 1979 to 1999. They had two children. Businessman, investor, and philanthropist Brett Icahn are one of them. Carl married Gail Golden in 1999. Some people get rich studying artificial intelligence. Me, I make money studying natural stupidity. This theory of Carl Icahn has earned him millions in addition to numerous infamous titles. His firebrand style is popular with other hedge fund bigwigs, including Bill Ackman, Daniel Loeb, and Nelson Peltz. But more than any of them, Carl Icahn is known to efficiently use the media as a podium to declare his latest investment ideas. That approach has driven a wedge between him and other investors, who feel companies lack the resources to strive against Icahn's countercharges effectively. It's also dangerous because something as simple as an Icahn tweet can move a stock dramatically. Still, Icon believes he is fighting for a noble cause and upholds that he works beneficially alongside corporate leaders to bring about transformations in their organizations. These days, Icon refers to himself by the more agreeable title of activist investor instead of corporate raider, but his manuscript remains the same, provoking a former company chairman to define him as one of the greediest men on earth. He is now a prominent philanthropist with several foundations that support homeless children and give shelter to single mothers. He has also made significant donations to education. The legend has also inspired other investors and fictional characters in film productions. As one of the richest men in the world, he has promised to donate half his fortune to charity when he dies. For someone who grew up in a moderate house and desperately wanted a luxury home and car, his status quo is beyond what he could have imagined. What is your reflection on the strategies adopted by Carl Icahn? Was he a threat to the corporate world? Did he take the illegitimate path to achieve his goals? Or did he act with prudence and set an example for smart investors? Are you curious to know more about the secrets of famous and infamous investors around the globe? Then don't wait to hit the like button if you enjoyed the video, and subscribe to the channel for more interesting stories. We'll see you in our next video. Until then, goodbye.